welcome to my channel. My name's Angela and this is Devon Thread Tales. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I'm sharing with you all of the things that I made throughout the month of April. That's all things that I've been sewing. So if that's something that you're interested in, then please do stay and watch along. <laughs> so I decided to take part in the Sew Selfless April 2023 challenge that was um, taking place over on Instagram and this was a challenge that was set up by Adele from Sew for Serenity, Crystal from My Social Thread and Claire from Stitch Hem Sew. I'll put all their details down below so that you can go and have a look at their channels and Instagram etc. So they decided to put together this challenge which started last year and and I decided to take part in it. It started with I would do one or two things, but in the end, I actually decided to sew something for each member of my family. And I didn't end up sewing anything for myself at all, except for possibly some cushions, which I'm kind of sidelining as, well, they're for everybody, not just for me. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with the couple of things that I have here because I'm actually in the house totally alone. Now I've been married for just short of 25 years. It's our 25th wedding anniversary later on this year. And I am very rarely in the house on my own, but my husband has gone away on a training camp thing, which is taking place in France and he's gonna be away for a week. And my daughter at the same time, the one who's living at home at the moment, she's gone to London for three days. So. I've had this really weird few days where I've been completely on my own, very organised and the house is the tidiest it's ever been, but it's also the quietest it's ever been and it's really, really bizarre. It's just me and the dogs. <laughs> so I decided that um, while they're away, I would do a few bits of sewing, I would get some videos done and all that kind of thing. But even though I'm at home on my own, all of those plans have gone out of the window and I haven't done any sewing yet at all, but I am doing my videos, so I'm quite pleased about that. So, um, they have gone away and they've actually got quite a lot of things that you know I've made for them, so I'm only gonna be able to show you photos and things, except for a couple of the items that I've got here with me. So I'm gonna start with what I would say is probably the most boring of items and that is a cushion. So this wasn't really a selfless sew but I decided to brighten up what I've been calling my bus stop on my inside my front door and I would recover my cushions. They had on them originally a very pale uh, like minty green sort of coloured cushion with some embroidery on them. They were old um, Laura Ashley cushions but they'd been sun damaged. I'd had them for years and years and I just felt like we needed some brighter colours on there. So I bought this fabric from Haberdashery Fabrics and Raw and I recovered the cushions like this. So I'm really pleased with how they've come out. I did debate putting piping on them, but then I couldn't decide what colour. And I did think, oh, probably this maroony red sort of colour that's here um, would be the best colour to, to do. But I then thought that might restrict me because at some point we want to redecorate our hallway and I didn't want it to be these to be too red. Um, and I thought by putting the red piping on them, it would kind of make them like that was their main colour. So I decided to just keep them plain like this and multicoloured, you know, as the fabric is. And I'm really, really pleased that I have. I think they look fabulous. They look lovely. I put a picture of them on my bus stop. <laughs> I just did a lapped zip and um, I had to, honestly, I can't believe this. I put in zips all the time on my garments and things, but it's always a concealed zip. And I, I had to actually go and Google how to put in a lap zip, which just sounds really crazy because of the amount of sewing I do. I just can't believe I had to do that, but it was easy enough. And I found some great tutorials on YouTube. Um, so that was absolutely great. And uh, yeah, really, really pleased with how they've turned out. So that was my make, it wasn't my first make, but that's the first make that I'm sharing with you. So the next thing that I wanted to share with you is what I made for Amy. Now, we originally decided, a bit of a discussion between myself and Amy, that I was going to make her a dress. She'd given me a dress that she kind of liked the shape of, but didn't like the colour of. And we went through lots of my fabric, but she was really adamant that she didn't want me to buy any additional fabric. And 
really I don't think she totally and utterly loved any of the fabric that I had and then one evening when I was sewing something else she just sort of came into me and said do you know what I want a really nice oversized t-shirt she has this oversized quite nice thick t-shirt that she's had for a year or so long sleeve stripy just round neck very plain just just a t-shirt and she said I quite like something really similar to that and I have this fabric that I've had for a long time I bought it for her in mind to make a dress and then I think when it came the pattern on it was way bigger than what I actually realized I thought the pattern on the fabric was going to be really small but it was huge and I just thought I'm not really sure that's going to be ideal to put um, on a dress and I don't think she would wear it. Anyway as you may have heard before she is a bit of a shark mad person. <laughs> she absolutely loves sharks and so she said oh, I'll have it in that shark fabric. So I made the Helen's Closet Jackson Tea and it came out really really well. I'm so pleased with it. I already had the Jackson tee made up in a short sleeve t-shirt that I'd made for myself as a, a pyjama top, which I wouldn't say was an oversized t-shirt for me, but she's a lot smaller than what I am. So I said to her, why don't you try that on and see what you think of it? And if needs be, I'll size down. But she tried it on and she was, she was like, no, that's absolutely fine. And I just want straight sleeves. I don't want any cuffs. And I want it the same length, you know, it's sort of almost like a, not a, not a long t-shirt but it wasn't cropped it was kind of somewhere in between it sort of sits just about on her waistband so she was absolutely delighted with this t-shirt once I'd made it and she says she's worn it loads so <laughs> it's just a bit bizarre and a bit strange with this kind of you know shark <laughs> shark theme on it but hey ho it's fine but I had a bit of fabric left over in fact I had loads of fabric left over so I decided to make a pair of pants now these aren't Amy's pants they're nobody's pants at the moment, but I made the Megan Nielsen Acacia pants and I just think they're hilarious because they are shark pants with a big shark on the back. And they are, they're just a really simple make. They've just got this sort of, um, you know, knicker elastic kind of on them. I don't know what you call that, underwear elastic. Um, Megan Nielsen Acacia pants. I think you can buy the pattern, but if you sign up to her, um newsletter which is free to do you can get the acacia pattern for free so it's really good really good instructions the only thing is they do kind of remind me of the sort of pants that um you know you wore when you were a little girl <laughs> not because they've got sharks on but just the style of them and i will say i've made myself a few of these pants and they are super super comfy but I think I would quite like to get into maybe making something a little bit prettier or just, yeah, not quite so, I don't know what you call it, like Marks and Spencer's teenager kind of pants. <laughs> just noticed I've got a loose thread on it and that's really, oh, pulled it off. <laughs> loose thread on it, it's really annoying me. So yeah, so I am really delighted with these. Who's going to wear them? I don't know. I don't mind sharing them with you because actually nobody's claimed them yet. So they aren't anybody's particular pants. But yeah, I've made the Acacia pants by Megan Nielsen to go with the top that Amy has got, but obviously not necessarily for her to have. So whoever will have them will have them. I then had loads of the fabric left over and I thought, you know what, before I start getting to the realms of, you know, having lots of fabric left over and not knowing what to do with it, because I'm a bit of a, once I've made something in one fabric, I don't really like to make another thing with it. Something like that's absolutely fine, but I wouldn't make them like another whole garment. So I decided to put it on my D-Stash account straight away and a lovely lady bought it and I've sent it off. So I'm hoping it's gone to a loving home where it's going to be made into something that somebody else is going to really enjoy. Because I've had such a lot of time sorting out my fabric and I feel really organised. I, I thought, right, get on it, be on it, actually sort it out straight from the off. So yeah, it was great to get rid of that. If you want details on my D-Stash account, I'll put the details below in my description of the video below as well. So I will show, share with you the next thing. While we're on the subject of pants, <laughs> I will share these with you, but there's no getting away with whose these are. So I'm really sorry, John, for sharing this, but I've made John a pair of boxer shorts. Oh, 
<laughs> so this is the Waves and Wild Superhero Boxer Shorts and they're a really simple make they're very very easy you can make it with um actual elastic if you want to but i just made it with jersey because they said you could do that in the pattern as well and um, these have gone through the wash and they're a cotton jersey and they look like they need um ironing but i'm not going to iron pants so i'm sorry <laughs> they look a bit wrinkled um but yeah so these pants they are, I would say, probably the ugliest pants I've ever seen. Not because of the pattern, but because they are all done in one fabric and it's totally plain fabric. And I was a bit like, well, I've made them. I'm going to let John have them, but I'm not going to be disappointed if he decides not to wear them. But he put them on and he was like, oh, they're lovely. <laughs> they're really comfy. So I was like, oh, okay then. <laughs> So there are a few different options with these pants. You can make them, or boxers, should I say? I won't call them pants, boxer shorts. You can make them with or without this cuff detail that's on the bottom here. And I was gonna make them without the cuff detail because my friend Karen from So Little Time had also made these um, previously. And she said, oh, I just don't bother with the cuff. And while I was making them, I, I said to John, oh, they come with a cuff, but I'm guessing you wouldn't want that anyway. And he went, oh no, actually, I, I think I'd quite like that. He quite likes them to feel quite tight around his is it thigh muscle or thigh yeah so he was like that would that would be quite nice to have that um so I did that it is meant to have a double lining on this section here I don't know how to describe it I don't know if you can see that so I'm looking in my screen here to make sure you can see it but in this section here this is meant to be double lined and I didn't read the instructions properly so it isn't double lined I'll turn them inside out so you can see um I promise they're clean like really clean <laughs> um but they're meant to have so where you can see all the overlocking there that's meant to have another seam and I did think once I'd made them I thought mm, they might not be comfortable because there is that seam there but he, he said that they were absolutely fine but another time I will make them I will make sure that I put that double double layer in because I think that'll be more comfortable and I will make these again um but I'm really pleased with them they're meant to be cut on the fold so the on the main section so the back shouldn't have a seam down the back but I didn't have enough fabric to do it all in one go um so I actually just put it on the fold made sure that there was a um a, you know a centimeter seam allowance and just join them together and again he hasn't said anything to say that they aren't comfortable but yeah so that's John's boxer shorts <laughs> nothing like airing your laundry on there <laughs> on, on the internet is there <laughs> Anyway, the reason I made those is because I had lots of fabric left over from, or enough fabric left over from the t-shirt that I made for John. So I am going to put the name of the pattern up on the screen, but I can't remember exactly what it is. I think it's a birder pattern and off the top of my head, I want to say it's 6044, but I'll make sure it's on the screen and I'll make sure it's in the description below as well. But I decided I was going to make John a t-shirt replicating a t-shirt that he had had uh, worn previously and um, I put it up on my plans video as a bit of a debate about what colour ribbing I should do with this t-shirt and I had decided either do I do it in the same colour as the t-shirt, do I do it in white, do I do it in black or navy blue and lots and lots and lots and lots of people commented and said what they thought it, it would be best to do it in and in the end I asked John <laughs> and said what would you like and he went well white because that's what my other one is. So I was like okay so i'll do it in white that's no problem at all so thank you to everybody that contributed to that um i really do appreciate it but john had the final say so this t-shirt pattern is actually a round neck t-shirt and i decided to make it a v-neck so it, it looked similar to the other t-shirt that i had done so a couple of things oh, the other t-shirt that he has that's a ready to wear sorry not that i done that i've made so couple of things to note about this t-shirt first of all I am really delighted with how it's come out in terms of what it looks like I think it's a really nice looking t-shirt I think that really nice deep dark sort of jadey green or I don't know what color you'd call that actually teal green um or blue um against the white and then with the emblem on it I think looks absolutely fantastic I think the the contrast of it looks really really great and I'm so pleased with it so it is meant to be a round neck t-shirt and I just cut into the neck and made it a v-neck and then um, I did have a little look up online to see some tutorials on how to do a v-neck. I'm a bit disappointed with how the v-neck came out. I 
um, I tried it several times and I and it kept um, puckering and not looking great and, and eventually I put it together and I feel like it's the best of a best of a bad job really I mean I think to anybody else you probably wouldn't see it and I think I'm being really really pernickety over my own work but I just felt like the the way it lays on his neck because of the double layer and I think where I've possibly overstretched it a little bit it just looks not quite flat and I think another time I would try and do the neckline slightly different. I then added cuffs and I made a mistake with the cuffs as well and I did too large a seam allowance and I feel like the cuffs are too narrow but he hasn't said anything. I, did, I didn't say anything to him. He was just like, oh no, it's really great. <laughs> so that's fine. The only other thing, I feel like I'm saying all negative things about this t-shirt, but I am actually really pleased with it. Um, the only other thing I would say about the t-shirt is he asked me to make sure I made it a size bigger than the last time I'd made it because he's put a bit of weight on and he felt like the old t-shirt that I'd made him was a bit too small. I've made the t-shirt as a pajama top previously and he just said I think it's getting a bit tight so can you make the next size up and without thinking I just made the next size up but then didn't check it and I overlocked it, made it, didn't get him to try it on at all until it was completely finished and it was still just a little bit too tight so I probably should have gone up two sizes but I had it hanging on my door for ages and every couple of days I kept coming in and going like that and like tugging it and trying to pull it really, really tight to kind of stretch it out. I don't think that's like a very professional way of trying to alter the size of a top. But I had no room for manoeuvre on the seams because I'd overlocked everything. And as my dear friend Karen had said, you should have tacked it first and got him to try it on. I was like, yes, I know. <laughs> but I didn't, so it's too late. But I know for another time. And what I might do is I might just use the same pattern and it's got a one and a half centimetre seam allowance on it. I might just use a smaller seam allowance and that probably will be enough, just that sort of centimetre or so each side. So yeah, so never mind. bit of a learning curve. And I just ordered the um, patch that I put on it from eBay. I've ordered a couple. I got him to choose which one he wanted. It was an iron-on one. I ironed it on with um, an ironing cloth to make sure I protected the fabric. And then I actually stitched around it very, very slowly and very carefully in white just to make sure that it, was, um, it wasn't gonna peel off because I don't know how well the iron-on transfer things stay on. But I'm really pleased with it on the whole, except for those little bits that I mentioned. <laughs> so I'll share with you the next thing. One of the items that I do actually have in my in my presence is the dress that I made for Ellen and I made her the Deer and Doe Givre dress. Now she's not taken this away with her so I have got it here with you uh, with me to show you. So I've made the Deer and Doe Givre a few times. I've made it for myself and I've also made it for Ellen and I've made it for her in a t-shirt jersey in a rainbow cotton jersey and it's absolutely gorgeous in fact I'll put a picture of that in so you can see what that looks like and she asked me if I could make her a bodycon dress and when we went into haberdashery fabrics and more she chose this fabric and this is actually a pontaroma like a lightweight pontaroma so when I say lightweight the fabric isn't lightweight but in comparison to some pontaromas it is lightweight and it hasn't got as much stretch as what a cotton jersey has got. So I made it in the same size as I would ordinarily. And she is really pleased with it. But she did say, oh, mum, it's a bit tight. <laughs> and she tried on her other one and she was like, well, that's not tight. And I said, it's the fabric. It's because this fabric hasn't got quite as much stretch. But she said it's fine. Now, she wanted a bodycon dress that was going to be really long. I'll stand up and show you. So it goes on and on, and on, and on. <laughs> it's really, really long. So all I did was I took the, the pattern pieces and I, where it comes down, I just continued the lines down, 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 down. And I debated putting splits in it, but she said, oh no, I don't want splits in it. I just want it to be completely straight, you know, really tight. You know what teenagers are like, they like tight to wear tight stuff don't they so I was like okay that's fine but I might be a bit awkward I think you might need a split in it she's like no 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 I don't want to split in it I just want it to be completely straight so I made it and she put it on like I say said it was a bit tight but on the whole she was like oh, I really like it it's really really nice then 
Amy, Ellen and I went out for a bit of lunch and we parked up and walked to the restaurant or the cafe that we were going to and Ellen was lagging behind and I was saying, come on Ellen, what? we're going to be late, what, what are you doing? She was like that, oh, I can't walk. <laughs> she was like waddling along because she couldn't split her legs at all. And by the time we'd got to the end of that day, she went, I think I need to split it. <laughs> so I have unpicked, obviously I didn't have a lot of room to be able to do this, take it off the hanger. I've unpicked the side seams. She tried it on again and she... We, we measured like where her knees were. I've unpicked it and all I've been able to do, I don't know if you can see this, um, all I've been able to do is literally unpick and then fold back where the um, serger stitches are or the overlocker stitches are and then actually sew that down and sew it across here. Um, I had to unpick obviously the hem a little bit on each side of that. Um, Ordinarily, I would have had a, a proper sort of larger seam allowance and stitched around it like that, but I, I only had what I was working with. And I knew if I didn't do it, she was never gonna wear this. So, or I would have had to have chopped it off so it was shorter, but she was really insistent that she wanted it long. And she's tried it on now and she's like, oh my gosh, that's made all the difference. So she can actually walk and it looks a lot better. <laughs> so I am quite pleased with that. But yeah, she's really delighted with it. Um, I haven't got any pictures of her wearing it where it's got the splits in it. I've only got pictures of her wearing it um, when it was in its original form. So I hope that's okay. But I am going to show you the last thing that I made. So you may remember that a little while ago I made a white sort of roll neck top or um, tarsal neck top for my eldest daughter Katie and it was long sleeve and I just and I made it was the uh, True Virus Nico top and because I had started making something for everybody else I was like right Katie I need to make something for you I don't want you to be left out what would you like and she asked me to make her another tarsal neck top but sleeveless and um she said that she wanted it to be fairly plain so that she could wear it when she's going out on placements. She's training to be a speech and language therapist and she's um, currently training. So she's going out um, on these placements and visiting people. And she said, obviously I need to be comfortable, but I need to be smart. And um, it would be really nice to have something like that. I really quite fancy that style. So I thought, well, I've already made her the Nico top um, I may as well make her exactly the same again. I, I know it fits her, but you know, it's, I don't have to mess around with anything and it'd be a super, super quick make. And I had the most tiniest bit of the white ribbed fabric left over from Minerva. And I thought, right, I'm gonna just see if I can squeeze this out. I've got no sleeves, so I should be able to do it. And oh my gosh, I did. And I had the tiniest, scrappiest bit of fabric left, which I was delighted with because I hate having loads of fabric left over. So I had to redraw the pattern pieces out, which was a bit of a shame because I thought, oh great, I can just do this, it'll be easy. But there's actually a separate pattern piece for the sleeveless version and a separate pattern piece for the sleeve version. So I guess it just does the sleeve or the arm size slightly different so it, it falls a bit better. But I made sure this time that I pressed the fabric because I'd made a mistake previously where I hadn't pressed the uh, rib fabric because it just looked fine. And then whilst I was making it, I was iron, ironing it and then it sort of made it bigger and then the garment was too big. So I made sure this time it was all done really, really properly. And I gave it to her and she is delighted with it. She says it fits really nicely. She really likes it hasn't been warm since I've made it so she's I don't think she's had a chance to wear it but she is really really pleased with it so that was my last item to have made so that was a turtle neck top for Katie a t-shirt for Amy um a t-shirt for John and a pair of boxer shorts a dress for Ellen a pair of pants who are who's I don't know they're who they're going to go to and my cushion <laughs> And that's all the things that I made in April. And do you know what? I I feel like it was a real breath of fresh air. It was such a lovely challenge for um, Crystal and uh, Claire and Adele to put together. I hadn't taken part in it last year. I, I wasn't really going on Instagram all that much last year, so I don't think I I don't think I was even aware of the challenge last year. But obviously I was I, I 
just looked at Instagram a little bit more this time and, and it was really lovely to, to take part in it. And I had been feeling a little bit flat with my sewing. I hadn't lost my sojo. I just felt a bit like, oh, I don't know what to make and what am I gonna do? And this was just really nice because I thought, well, I'm not making anything for myself. I'm just gonna sew something for someone else and they get to choose, they get to choose what I make. I mean, I was very lucky. They all wanted something that was made out of Jersey. And let's face it, that makes life a lot easier because it's so easy to fit. Oh, well, unless it's a t-shirt for your husband when he's put on a bit of weight. Um, but they're all so easy to fit and sew together and really, really quick make. So it just felt really nice. And I've got to the end of the month and I feel really sort of revved up and sort of like, right, what am I going to make? And I've put together a plans video, which I'll put a link in here if you want to see it, for the month of May. And I feel like my head's going, because oh, I just want to make so many different things. Um, but I just wanted to share one last thing with you. And that was one of the things that one of the reasons I was feeling a bit flat was because I'd had two makes that um, I'd made in so this was April must have been March that I'd made them where I didn't feel like it had really gone to plan I was a little bit disappointed so um, I'd made a pair of trousers which just didn't suit me and I didn't like and I'll put a picture in here or what have you and I'd also made a dress which I have definitely made the wrong size I've checked my pattern pieces and I'd made the size too big for me and I I took the dress the other day downstairs with my unpicker a cup of tea in hand put a tv program on and I thought right I'm going to unpick this and I'm going to get it sorted and I sat there with the unpicker ready and poised ready for action and I just thought I don't want to do this I don't want to unpick it so I took the dress into work today and in the school that I work in and I hung it in the staff room and I put an email out to all the staff and said, I've made a dress which um, is not my style and unfortunately I've made it in the wrong size. I think it's roughly this size, but I can't take it to a charity shop. If anybody would like it, it's free to a good home. And the deputy head teacher took it and I was delighted. <laughs> I was like that, oh, and she was really grateful. She was like, I really like it, it's such a nice dress. And she tried it on and, and she looked lovely in it. And I'm just so pleased. So that was really nice that I was able to do that. And yeah, it was just really nice to give it to somebody and know that they're gonna enjoy wearing it. And then the trousers actually went to Helen from Stitch Rip Repeat. She came round and I was talking to her about the trousers and she said, can I try them on? I said, yeah. She put them on, she went, I love them. So I was like, they're yours. <laughs> just really happy because there was a part of me that was like do I unpick it do I go to the bother of trying to do this and do that and do you know what? I just don't like doing that I don't like repairing stuff particularly and I don't like um you know re remaking something into something else and I feel like that's kind of, although I'll be resizing that was kind of like the take on it that it was going to be if I unpicked it all so the fact that I've been able to give it to somebody and it's just off my mind and out of my life and I'm just really delighted that I've been able to do that so I feel like it's been a really successful month in in April I keep saying March honestly I can't believe how fast this year is whizzing away but yes yeah, so that's everything bit of a quicker video for me today. I hope that you've all really enjoyed that. Please do tell me what you've been making. Did you get involved in So Selfless April 2023? If you did, what did you make and did you enjoy it? Was it a, was it a sort of a, a refreshing break for you uh, like it has been for me? Do let me know in the comments below. But other than that, I hope you're all having a good week. You take care and I'll speak to you all again soon. Bye! Mm -hmm.